Welcome to Married to History, where we try to be informative, entertaining, and family-friendly. Aloha! I'm Christopher. I have a fancy piece of paper on my wall that says that I know more about history than most people do. I'm Shirley. I'm a homeschool mom that relies on good curriculum, Christopher, and YouTube to teach our kids history. YouTube? Really? YouTube is so useful. Oh, that's right. I'm thinking of Tickety Talk. No! Right. Yes, you, well, YouTube is quite useful. There's I, a lot of good history content I, on TikTok, too. And I was telling you just the other day, I'm so excited. I get to use YouTube videos at work now, because now I can show all those <laughs> science uh, videos that I've been trying to show my students forever and a day. Yep, yep. All right, so honey, I want to do something a little different today. Uh-oh. You'll love it. Trust me. Is this going to be family appropriate? Do we need to tell our younger listeners to close their ears? Don't be ridiculous. So, as you know, one of my favorite TV shows is the historical drama called The Midwife. Yes. Yes. And are you? do you know when that show takes place? If I recall correctly, this takes place in between the Second War and uh, the Korean conflict. Yes. So, it's late 1950s is when the show starts. And it's oh, set... late 1950s? Yeah. Then this is after the Korean War also. When's the Korean War again? The early 50s. I should know that. Okay. So, late 1950s. Oh, yeah, I didn't realize it was that late. Yeah. Okay. And it takes place in the east end of London, which is a poorer part of, of the city. I'll have to take your word for it. Never yes. been there. So how... I'd like to go to London before I go to Tulsa. <laughs> if we go to London, we have to go to the West End and see the musicals there, by the way. <laughs> is, that, is that England's Broadway? It is. Oh, so okay. I need to see Six in the West End instead of seeing it on Broadway, if I had my choice. Because hearing them... Hearing Americans sing those songs with American accents is a little weird. Like, it's better in British, but... I'll take your word for it. <laughs> You've only heard the British songs. Okay. Anyways, so how familiar are you with this period and setting in history? Uh, with London in particular, I know some of London's history. I wouldn't say that I have an extensive amount of knowledge of it. I know that it was one of the cities that was founded by the Romans, or at least it got its name from the Romans if the Romans didn't find it. Um, Did they get all the way to London? The Romans? Yeah. Where's Hadrian's Wall? In England. I know, but like England and Scotland. north or south of London? North. Okay, well then there you north. go. <laughs> there, that's all I needed so, to know. I, I don't know for sure if, if it divides England from Scotland, but in the days of the Roman Empire, yeah, yeah it divided the Roman part yeah. of the island from the yeah, from I the, knew that. the Celts and the Picts. And the okay, that's part very of the far removed from the late 1950s, okay. though. <laughs> yeah. um, but And then I know some of the goings-on of the late 1950s, but as far as specific to England or mm -hmm. specific to that part of London, yeah. I doubt that I know anything too extensive. You would have to start talking, then maybe I remember something. Okay. Well, instead of me just talking about that time period, we're going to watch an episode together. What? Yes. I did not agree to this. I cannot wait. I'm so, haven't I already watched that show I with you the billion I don't times? Know. I don't know how much you've actually seen it, but we're just going to watch my favorite episode, which How's is this season... going to work on a podcast? Well, I'll explain. So we're going to watch season four, episode eight, and this is my favorite episode for a couple reasons that is will Monica make sense when we clip? watch it. Of course she is. Okay. I, she's the one I like. She's the best. Sister Monica Joan is the star of the show. Anyway, so we're going to watch it together off mic and I want you to take notes of just your impressions I or have to take notes. I mean just so you fine, don't what take I, notes. What Keep I, it in your head. Kid? I'm the one that tells people to take notes. I haven't taken notes since I don't know, it's been years. Mm hmm Anyways, so and then we'll get back on the mic and just kind of talk a little bit about what we learned. Why are you doing this to me? Because it's my show. <laughs> I thought it was our. Oh, this is my that's show. That's right, I forget. I'm married, so nothing is ours. Everything is yours. That's, that's true. That's a lie they tell men. That's true. It's only one episode. You can handle it. What, I, how many episodes have I watched I don't you? know. I have watched so I don't many know. because you wanted me to. And you've probably seen this episode before. I mean, if you think you've watched several episodes, I probably made you sit down and watch this one before because it is so good. Mm-hmm. Okay. How are we going to watch it? We don't have Netflix anymore. I just got it from the library. Oh. I got the DVD. And did you know that the the DVD is the British release of the episodes? I did not know but that. But Netflix has the American release of the episodes. So they cut a few random things to release in America on PBS. I think it was probably cut for time. But yeah, so there's there might be some things in this episode that I haven't seen before. But that's what we're going to do. Yay. 
All right, so. Am I at least going to get popcorn out of this? I suppose. Are you going to go make it for me? I do need to go to the store today. Well, we will be back, okay? To be continued. And we're back. So what did you think of the episode, Annie? It was long. It, it is long. It's not like an It was long for movie. five minutes. <laughs> I dare say five minutes of total screen time that she wanted me to see. All of the episode is good. But yes, the thing that I primarily want to talk about didn't get that much screen time. Mm -hmm. Because they always, they cram in a lot of storylines into, what, an hour episode? Mm -hmm. And don't get me wrong, I, it was I, all beautiful. I, I liked the episode, I'm fairly fond of the show, but not to the point where, ooh, I look forward to sitting down and watching it. I mean, this is hardly the Mandalorian we're talking about here. <laughs> That's true. All right, so of course, the part that I want to talk about is the, the mother who had hyperemesis, gravid arm. Okay. Now, why would I like that episode, honey? Oh, so we're, we're getting into some real, real recent history here. Now, I've told you, uh, that like after the 50s, it kind of gets outside of my area of expertise here. But if I recall correctly, around about 2005 or so, uh -huh. there was a young woman who I was uh, familiar with who uh, oh ended up, uh, she was pregnant for the first time, mm -hmm. and she had hyperemnesis. And... She was so like weirded out by mm. no, this. Doesn't make sense. Why is this happening? Why can't I hold anything down? <laughs> and uh, it got so She's bad, so we had mean. to take her to the emergency room one time. Mm -hmm. And that's when she got diagnosed with something that we had never heard never of before. Yeah. And since then, she has been a, a self-proclaimed crusader <laughs> of hyperemesis awareness. That is true. Not so much in in recent years because I haven't been pregnant for ten years. But, like, back when it was, like, fresh in my mind, I was, like, telling everyone I knew who was pregnant, if you're throwing up too much, it's not just morning sickness. So, yes, for those who haven't picked up on the subtleties yet, mm -hmm. so uh, we have four children. With the first three, mm -hmm. uh, Shirley had hyperemnesis. She was mm -hmm. puking constantly. It was yep. so bad. We had to take her to the emergency room on at least one occasion for each pregnancy, yep. several for some for of them. For number two, it was... Okay. Uh, uh, for number three, I think we even had a nurse come into the house to take care of yes. Shirley at bedside for I a had, time. I had an IV in my arm in my bed at home. For hydration. So uh, when uh, we uh, when number four was coming along, which was quite unexpected, we were we were not expecting him. Mm -hmm. We were panicked because oh, crush is going to go through it again, and yep. it got worse. Like it was bad with number mm -hmm. one, it was worse with number two, it was awful with number three. Yep. So we're thinking, oh my goodness, Shirley's going to die this time. Yep. And nothing. I had regular nothing. morning sickness. She was. Fine and dandy, not a problem in the world the entire yeah. time with number four. Yeah. That's probably why he's her he's favorite. <laughs> he was a miracle baby. <laughs> he's not a baby yes. anymore. <laughs> yes. So it's called hyperemesis gravidarbum, which literally just means too much puking during pregnancy. That's all it means. <laughs> Cool. It's very. I can see why they scientific. chose hy hyperemesis gravidarum instead. It yeah. Sounds a lot cooler. Yeah, and, and we just always called it hyperemesis. Um, I, I see a lot of people online just calling it HG. Um, and some people might know about it because of uh, Princess Kate. Or I guess, yeah, she's Princess Kate. Princess Kate? Uh, Catherine married William of England. Why are you giving me that blank stare? Oh, Heir to the, the throne. The, 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 oh, okay. <laughs> Yes. Sorry, I, I, I believe it's been said before. I stopped caring about the royal family like 250 years ago or such. Yes. Back in 1776. Yes. So anyways, she she experienced it. I don't know about all three of her pregnancies, but she definitely Wait, no, experienced she, it. No, she married... News. Isn't her husband George? Her son is George. I thought Charles' we... sons are William and Harry. Oh, for some reason... She I th married William. Okay, for some reason I was getting William and Harry mixed up. But then, okay, yeah. apparently I didn't know that <laughs> Harry was the name. Uh, yes. Harry, yes. Harry's the one that uh, has, uh, like, all but ostracized the family, yes? Oh, he absolutely has ostracized himself from okay. the family. <laughs> yes. Right. Anyway, continue. Anyway, so, so I looked it up, and according to the numbers that I found, 0. 0.3 
to 2% of pregnant women get HG. So it's super rare. Mm -hmm. But I swear I've talked you to... You won the lottery, won honey. The lottery. You beat the odds. Yay. I'm so proud of you. Uh, now, if only yeah. you could do that on a, for a monetary scale. <laughs> <laughs> I'm willing to bet, though, it's probably more common than that because I've talked to so many women who... There are a lot of women that just endured it, went through it undiagnosed. Yeah, yeah. which I did forever. Like, though, it was never one of those you things... You did until we had to take you to the hospital. Until yeah. I fainted at work. <laughs> yeah. And that was one of those things in, like, the baby books, you know, prepare, the pregnancy books that you're supposed to read while you're pregnant... I don't remember HG ever being mentioned. It would say, like, have a little blurb about morning sickness. Oh, eat some crackers when you wake up. That never worked. And it would it might have said, like, it should end after your first trimester, but it might go longer if you do puke too much, talk to the doctor. That was it. But what is too much? I didn't know it was that bad until I literally fainted at work. <laughs> So no one had ever told me that word before or that was something that I should watch out for. So you were a victim of that age-old problem that continues to affect uh, humanity to this day. Mm -hmm. The idea of, oh, if you give up, you're a sissy. Instead of, no, recognize you have limits and you're yeah. getting dangerously close to those limits. And I definitely wasn't a sissy. <laughs> okay, but let's talk about the in the episode. So some of the first... So this mother, we find out that she has hyperemesis but at first she's just a single mom with a little boy and she throws up in her handbag when she goes to the clinic because one of the other moms is talking about baby food and like she throws up in her sink when somebody mentions the word milk <laughs> like okay she just has morning sickness and some of the characters say just um sister evangelina one of the nuns tells her it's mind over matter that'll get you through this i tried that mm -hmm. it didn't work with, with number three. So what you're saying is you were weak-minded. Yes, clearly. <laughs> I mean, after all, you married me, so I think everybody who knows you would agree you're weak-minded. Yes, yes, that's possible. And then another nurse later says, um, oh, it's probably just nerves. You know, doctor's not going to come and visit you just for morning sickness. Mm -hmm. She can come to the clinic next Tuesday, who, you know, that's days away. And every time, like, those characters said those things, I was cringing so hard. I was like, no, no, she's going to die. <laughs> she can't just wait till Tuesday. It's not just morning sickness. Uh, I know what uh. you mean. I mean, every time that I'm watching a war movie, like, uh, about the Battle of Gettysburg, per se, and I know that uh, the Confederates are charging up that <laughs> hill, I want to say, no, guys, they're, they're waiting for you up there. They're going to slaughter you. <laughs> you know what's coming. <laughs> yeah, why won't they just listen to me and try something different? Or, you know, surrender so to avoid yeah. the whole battle in the first yeah. place. I mean, that would work, too. Yeah, but that's that's not how history works. I've <laughs> or fictional that. TV shows. Either. Well, I mean, that's entirely how history works. Yes, it's just not how modern-day retellings in the media of history works. Yes. Yes, you, you, you can't keep yelling at Godzilla during the Godzilla movies and hope that one of these days, all right, he's going to duck under that uh -huh. attack or something like that so he doesn't get killed. Yep. So, oh, that, <laughs> I remember that. That was... A, it was a line in a Saved by the Bell episode. Mm -hmm. I remember there was an episode where uh, Screech was on a date. They were watching some monster movie, and he says something to the effect of, I keep hoping that they're going to change the end so that they'll let oh. him live in the end. <laughs> yes. And so we it's get... only so many times you can watch the what, what you know is going to happen. And you're like, how many of us yeah. watch the Titanic? We're like, no, something's going to happen. That's, okay, I know I, I see that the time. book's split in half, but something's going to happen now. <laughs> yeah, it never changes. <laughs> yeah, I noticed that. So let's let's go ahead then to the end of this lady's story that on this show. Stupid table or whatever it was never gets big enough either. No, the door. It was a door. Door. That, sorry, that I they were remember floating what, on. What it was officially was. <laughs> yes. Okay, so this character's story mm -hmm. in Call the Midwife. Mm -hmm. Okay, we get to the end of her story, and she, one of the nurses, arranges for her child to be taken care of by a nursery and a foster care, and then. You know, we see her in the clinic. And I really, really wish that her storyline was larger. Because we see her in the clinic one day looking like death after she had fainted at home. And then the next time we see her in the episode, she's happy and her boys come home and she's going home and everything's great. It would not have happened that fast. I mean, maybe. I don't know all that much about the medicine that they gave her. But it was weeks and weeks and weeks of torture. And I had modern medicine and IV hydration 
And it wasn't just one day of looking like death. No, honey, why are mothers so conceited? I mean, just because you went through this, you think that you know everything? I mean, like, you're so certain about that. Oh, it can't have been that fast. I, well, I appreciate the realism in this show, and I wish that they'd given more realism to this particular storyline because it's my personal pet peeve, like my pet um, thing that I, I like mm -hmm. to see. <laughs> Did yeah. one of our friends say you're nothing but a mother? Yes. <laughs> it's my only identity. <laughs> okay, so, and what was the big reveal at the end? What was the medicine they gave her? At the end of the episode, it is revealed that she is feeling so much better because they have given her a new type of drug. It's a miracle drug. Known as uh, thalidomide. Yep. Which for, I don't remember what it was, 10, 20 years, maybe longer than that, mm -hmm. everyone was convinced that, oh, this is a miracle! It solves morning sickness! Nobody was getting morning sickness anymore! And they eventually realized that, oh, it was causing massive birth defects. Awful, awful birth defects. So when I saw this episode the first time, I was like, oh my gosh, they, they have an HG patient on the show. Like, this is such a good storyline. I'm glad to see this. You know, raise more awareness on this issue. It's so significant. It got a mention in that Billy Joel song. It did. Yeah. <laughs> it Children did. of the Little Mike. Yes. So anyway, so the first time I watched this episode, then when it got to the end of the episode and suddenly she was cured and they said what medicine it was, it was like, oh, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't, I know you don't know what this is, but Pikachu shocked face is a meme. <laughs> that was I'm, me. Well, I don't have that. Yes. I'm, I'm familiar with the concept of, you know, something that the characters yeah. don't. Yeah. And I had no clue what thalidomide was. All I knew was from the Billy Joel song. And then I knew that it was in the Billy Joel song because it was a drug that created birth defects. I had no clue that it was associated with morning sickness or HG. Mm. at all so then when they put it together and they said that word i was like holy crap and that was the series finale not series it's, oh the, nope. the season finale in the uk they call each season a series oh it was the season finale and so it's like oh no i know they're going to have babies with birth defects in the next season and they did we don't see this mom again but we see another mom and we follow her story for a couple episodes but yeah the little mind is bad news so Honey, I have not researched it much beyond that. Do you know anything about what thalidomide, like, why, what? I, I don't know much uh, or anything about thalidomide. I'm not mm -hmm. even sure I remember correctly. If I'm remembering, if I am remembering correctly, uh, one of the most common problems was uh, damage to the limbs. Kids mm -hmm. would be born without, uh, without all their arms like or all their legs. Mm -hmm. um, but... That, that's the only thing that I recall. Yeah. It's, it's not something that I've researched heavily. Right. So or just at all. suffice it to say, it was awful and it eventually got banned and just pulled from the shelves. But what I have learned, and, and they touch on this in future episodes of Call the Midwife in season five, is it wasn't, you, and you asked me this, why did they not figure it out for a while? And I don't know what the medical testing was like back then, but I know that it wasn't necessarily always prescribed for morning sickness. A large problem was it was used as a sleep aid. And so it was given to people, pregnant or not, as a sleep aid. And many of these mothers were given it before they even knew they were pregnant. So it was like, it took a little longer to link the two together, mm -hmm. find out, okay, were these the cause of that? Because... You know, you're, you're a mother who isn't getting sleep at night. You have this miracle drug that will let you sleep, and you don't even know you're pregnant. And then you give birth to, or nine months later, give birth to a baby with these horrible birth defects. It would have been, I mean, a mystery. Mm -hmm. So in more recent years, there was a drug called Bendectin, which, do you remember when I was pregnant? I took um, vitamin B6 and Unisom. I do not remember what you okay. did when you were pregnant. Yes. I, I didn't pay attention to what they were called. I yeah. was just like, all right, <laughs> this is what you stuff. need to take. All right, here. Yeah. Well, so Bendectin was essentially what you can get today over the counter as Unisom, which is a sleep aid, and vitamin B6. Mixed together, it made a drug called Bendectin. And so it was available in the 1950s, yeah, 1950s as well. 
before morning sickness and in the 80s, I think, it was pulled from the shelf after, yeah, it was 70, nope, 83. 1983, Bendectin was removed from the, the shelf by the manufacturer because they had gotten so many lawsuits by people claiming that this new morning sickness drug, well, not new by that time, it was 30 years old, that this was causing birth defects, same as thalidomide. And people panicked because of the history with thalidomide. And so the manufacturer just pulled it from the shelves. Now, I haven't done much research on it recently, but from what I've seen, it wasn't true. There was no link, but there was so much fear because mm -hmm. of what had happened in the past that they just pulled it. So when I was pregnant... I dare say fear more than anything else has caused many travesties, small yeah. and grand in history. Yeah. So when I was pregnant in the 2000s, everyone knew about this. Like word went around among pregnant women, just take half a Unisom and a vitamin B6 and that'll help with morning sickness. So I did it. It didn't help enough, <laughs> but it was something, especially when my good medicines were so expensive and hard to get prescribed. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And then the company gave it a new name and started reselling it in 2015, I think. So hey, that's it's recent. Yeah. Yeah. It took them that long to release it back onto the market. Because there's just, you don't mess around with drugs and birth defects. <laughs> we cannot afford to take any risks. But, you know, in the meantime, women are suffering because they have nothing that they can do. So the drugs that I ended up, the good ones that I ended up taking, of course, were Phenergan, Zofran, and Reglan. During the, the three pregnancies, they gave me a different drug every time. And even those, it's off-label to give it to pregnant women. It, the label says... You know, you can only give this to pregnant women if the risks or the benefit clearly outweighs the risk because there's never zero risk with taking medicine, especially while you're pregnant. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I could have died. I'd say that's a big risk. And the benefit of maybe having a baby with one less limb was worth it. It's scary to have to make that decision. We would have still loved the baby, and if you had died, well, I had life insurance on you, so... <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank so you for that. We, 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 we would have gotten along. That's great. Thank you. I love to hear that. Do you still have life insurance? <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah. I'm going to have to fix that before January. Why January? What are you doing? No, no reason. Just, You're the it's, worst. It's a good thing to do before uh, before the next tax season. Yeah, that, 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 that's it. You're the worst. What? What did I say? It's a good idea to do things before the next tax season. Am I wrong? No, you're not wrong. Hey, here we go. You're not wrong. Okay, so the last thing that I want to talk about from this episode is mask wearing. Do you know the history of doctors and nurses wearing masks? I do not know the history of doctors and nurses wearing masks. I wouldn't be surprised to learn if in once upon a time the only reason was to hide that was in an attempt to hide the smell before they realized that oh no it's we don't want to contaminate. Oh, that's possible. I don't know. Oh, that's interesting. Because I seem to recall reading well, accounts of uh, ma doctor masks. I, I, yeah. I seem to recall accounts of doctors using clothespins uh, once upon a time, Ew. just putting a yeah, clothespin on your nose. Yeah. So by the fifties, when this show takes place, obviously wearing masks is completely standard for medical professionals. And of course we see that in MASH. But did mm -hmm. you see one single doctor or nurse wearing a mask in Call the Midwife? I did not, because there's only one character who we saw that was a doctor, isn't it? Well, yeah, there's only one doctor. The rest are nurses. And yes, never saw him wearing a mask. We saw a baby delivery. The nurse did not oh, wear a the mask nurse, in the, that. It wasn't the nurse, it was the midwife. Well, yeah, she's a nurse midwife. Oh, okay. Yeah, and she's yeah, delivering she was, a baby. She was not wearing a mask. Yeah. Okay, so this is something that I thought was interesting. Um, the creator of the show, Heidi Thomas, she was asked about this. And she said, you know, they were so, so concerned with making everything historically accurate in this show. Which is why I don't understand why you don't love this show as much as I do. <laughs> it's historical, honey! <laughs> One a show needs more than that to get me interested. I mean, you could show, you could show me a show about um, about. Uh, I'm trying to think of what's a good one. You could show me a show about digging drainage ditches. Drainage ditches are important to history, but I'm not going to sit there and watch 
Or, oh no, Building the Railroad. So, mm-hmm. Hell on Wheels was a good show about building the railroad. It uh-huh. had lots of drama, some good characters, and there's uh-huh. some nice storytelling. But if the show was just going to show me the rail line slowly creeping <laughs> across the landscape, yeah, that's historical, but it's not going to hold my interest. <laughs> I suppose. If I got to choose between, uh, between watching that or going to Tulsa, I'm going to choose going to Tulsa. <laughs> Anyways. I'm sure they have railroads in Tulsa. <laughs> Probably do. Okay, so the show the show creators are so concerned with making everything in the show historically accurate to the time period. Except in two instances. They gave the nurses or the midwives red cardigans. The the nurses there in that time period actually wore like gray, I think. And then they didn't have them wear masks. And she's, it was all... To because look. they were all pretty and they wanted the the audience to be able to see these pretty girls on the show? Possibly. But this is what she says. Uh, you have to make things work on television. Midwives would always wear a mask. The rule was at any point where the genitals of the mother were exposed. So sometimes, even the clinic situation, the midwife would always wear a mask when handling a newborn for extended period of time. We did some test shots, and it wasn't going to work on TV because you can't distinguish the characters or hear them speaking, and there is a sort of emotional barrier. So we did sit down and discuss it at great length because authenticity is so important to us, but we decided that we would dispense with the masks, so we've changed that now. We have occasionally once or twice seen cesarean sections, and in an operating theater, we do have all of our characters masked because we just feel that that would be an accommodation too far. So then I look at MASH, and I'm like, they wore masks. Sometimes for half an episode. Every episode. And we can totally ca- tell which characters are which. We can see emotion. You have to trust your actors. I was going to say, I, yeah, I, listening to you, that explanation, I'm like, that doesn't suit well with me. Because granted, I haven't watched your show to a high length. Yeah. But it seems to me most of the time there's never been, or if, there ever was, if there ever wasn't only one mm-hmm. midwife there... At best, there were two. Yeah. So how would you lose track of which one's which? Yeah. And and to there's a lot of emotion that an actor can give with their eyes and their body language. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of disappointing that they didn't trust their actors to do that because that realism, I think, would add a lot. I, I would say then that it's probably a fair game that when they were making these decisions, nobody bothered to say, hey, let's watch MASH and see how <laughs> they did it. <laughs> We should learn from history, right, honey? (laughs) Learn from those who did before, yes, who learned learned the lessons from them and how to get stuff done. Worked for them. But, interestingly enough, uh, season 10 was recorded during COVID, and they wore masks during those scenes for COVID. Cool. So, I haven't watched that season yet, but I think that's a positive change that I hope that they keep going forward. So, yeah. Cool. Do you have any questions or comments any more about this episode or thalidomide or masks? Um, let me see here. <laughs> I'm the expert this time. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think of a way in which I could say, oh, yes, honey, I have a history question. Or I have a midwifery question for you. <laughs> so mm-hmm. why were they called midwives? Was this back in the days where polygamy was practiced in oh England? Oh my gosh. And this was just the <laughs> second of three, or at least somewhere they were one of the, the middle, middle one. wives. They just couldn't be the first <laughs> wife and couldn't be the ending wife. I have no idea why they're called midwives. <laughs> sorry. Oh, I, I, I thought you were the expert. Uh, I yeah. guess not. I'm sorry to let you down. <laughs> Anything else? No, I'm good. No, you know what? While we were watching, you asked if if hyperemesis is one of those things that just was always around. I speculated, yeah. So I wonder what are the odds that hyperemesis is something that has been around since the dawn of time Uh and just always went under the radar and the the women who had it, either they survived or I would assume a lot of them probably died from the dehydration. Yeah, I think that's true. I think they just died. It's not caused by a bacteria or virus that has mutated and, you know, come about in recent generations. So I would assume it's always been around and you just died. The maternal death rate was so high in the past. Mm -hmm. I would have absolutely died if it weren't for modern medicine. And that is just scary to me. I can't imagine 
in being living it's in the past. That's, it's the same thing for a lot of people. I'm, I don't, I have no idea what the numbers might be, but I dare say there's hundreds of millions of people mm-hmm. alive today that wouldn't be if we were living a hundred or yeah. two hundred years ago before. Yeah. Diabetes, they didn't have any solution for that back then, so mm-hmm. I'd be out. Yeah. yeah you with your hyperamnesis, you'd be out. A lot of things that we have today that we're struggling to find out, okay, how do we deal with this? How do we treat this mm-hmm. condition or that condition? How do we take care of the people that are now living for years and years and years with this uh, condition or that condition that makes their care a little bit more difficult? Yeah. It's, yeah, in the past, these people wouldn't have lived to be that long. How many of these people wouldn't even gotten out of childhood? Exactly. I'm glad we're living now, <laughs> not back then. I've heard it said that way. Remember, yes, we are so fortunate to be living in this day when there is so much to enjoy in modern technology and ways of entertainment, mm-hmm. of healthcare, uh, travel, amongst other things. Yep. And just yeah. think about it. One of these days, our great, 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 great grandchildren will find out that, ugh, you mean you, you guys, you touch things with your hands? <laughs> I mean, nowadays we just press a button and the, the food beams into our mouth. You don't even have to push a button. You just blink in the right, right direction. Know, yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't be surprised if it's going to be like Wally, where uh, yeah. our great great grandchildren are just going to be sitting down in these flying chairs that will take them anywhere they want to go and provide their every need. That sounds amazing. They can even change the color of their clothes just by pressing a button on their <laughs> armchair. Sounds amazing. But it means that humans are not going to become very physically fit creatures. So when the aliens do come to invade, how the heck are we going to fight them <laughs> off? We won't even be able to outrun them. I guess that's something to consider. But we don't need to outrun them if our chairs are fast enough. Not if they use an EMP weapon. Then we're literally just going to be meat blobs <laughs> lying there wait, waiting to, waiting for them to come along and do whatever. That's a lovely thought. I just got done watching a sci-fi horror movie with my children, so yeah, this is mm. where my brain's going. Yeah, that makes sense. All right. I think that's all I have to ramble about today. Mm. We'll end it there. So was this about history? It's historical. We talked about history. All right. Okay, let me tell you the history of masks because I asked you the question and I didn't elaborate on it. I did not ask you a history question about masks. They didn't wear masks I did not ask you a question. You are not allowed to say anything because I did not ask you a question. How many times have you said things that I didn't ask questions about? I don't know what you're talking about and this isn't about me. (laughs) Okay. They didn't even wear masks in surgery until germ theory was fully accepted and germ theory is relatively new in the grand scheme of things yes and like back before germ theory was fully um fully accepted doctors would wear the same nasty uh apron apron all day covered in blood the more covered in blood and gore and feces it is the better doctor you are So they would go and do like an autopsy or something and just get nasty and then go deliver a baby and then go, I wonder why so many moms are dying after childbirth and they didn't understand it. And to suggest that it was the doctor's fault that was introducing germs to the mother and baby, that was unacceptable. A major insult. You can't suggest such a thing. The man who suggested it, who was like trying to like fix all this, he was laughed out of the profession. So what I'm hearing from you is that doctors don't like it when they're being told that they're wrong. And they, they dig in and get really stubborn Most saying, people. how dare you imply <laughs> that I'm wrong or that I don't know what I'm doing. Most people yeah, dig in when you're told the, that they're the, wrong. There's, there's nothing about that kind of an argument going on with doctors today at all. No doctors <sighs> out there that aren't saying something to the FHR of how dare you challenge me or disbelieve anything I say. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm a doctor and I know more than you. Yes. Mm. Yes. That's what you meant to imply, right? <sighs> it's not the direction I was heading, but sure. I love you. Yep. And I love teasing you about how I swear you're becoming more and more of an anti-vaxxer I'm every day. I'm literally not, though. I'm the <laughs> least anti-vax person you'll ever meet. You know that. And I know that. <laughs> But some of the things you say, you are more and more. Me. The, 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 the things you're saying, though, more and more sound it's a lot more like anti I've never stuff. said. You are making you're, crap you're, you're, up. You're, you're saying the things that kind of go in your mind. One can infer from the message you're that you're trying. <laughs> you are twisting my words to make it sound like that. If that's what you want to call it, all right. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> You're the worst and I hate you. You love me. I'm the best thing that ever happened to you. I have In never. In the immortal words of Miracle Max, <laughs> you never had it so good. I have never twisted your words. Ever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I have never implied that you um, yes. supported cannibalism. I've never done anything like that. It's a perfectly good means of recycling. Why would I have a problem with cannibalism? Oh my gosh. What? That was an example from one of our episodes. You weren't supposed to go along with it. Oh, come on. That was funny. <laughs> you take all the fun out of it. Oh, I'm sorry if I'm better at this game than you are. <laughs> Don't hate the player. Hate the game. I'll just hate you instead. All right. We're done. Are we? We're done. Thank you for listening. If you'd Wait, like... done like we're done <laughs> we or that this episode is done. done. If you liked what you heard, then please subscribe, tell your friends, and leave us a five-star review. If you'd like to hear a future episode with more information about today's topic, contact us on Gmail, Facebook, Instagram, or TikTok at Married to Hill and History Pod, or tune in to the latest episodes of Call of the Midwife. Wait, Aww. no, it's not Call of the Midwife. It's Call of the Midwife, right? You gave a plug to my favorite show. Yes, Call of the Midwife. if they want to learn more about today's episode, oh, they might as well watch the show, shouldn't That's they? That's true. You should. There you go. Everyone should watch Call of the Midwife. Be wary of Trixie, though. She's a trickster. <gasps> I love Trixie. And she had a good storyline in this episode, too, that we didn't even talk about. Yes. But isn't she tricky? She's not tricky. <laughs> That's stupid. I thought she was tricky. No, but I don't know what you even mean. Also, please contact us if you have a silly question idea or if there's something from history that you would love to learn about. Just be sure to specify in your message if it's a silly or serious because we don't want to treat a genuine quest for knowledge as a joke. Talk to you next time. we love jokes here. We hate jokes. I love jokes. Bye. Did you ever hear the one about the... Looks like that's the singer of Portrait of My Love. I bet he doesn't exist. Oh, they just stole Frank's voice. Slap they a different don't name do on that. it so that they can say that. No, no, that wasn't Frank. They always they always use songs from the year. Yes, mm-hmm. they do. Look, that's him. Okay. Yeah, so they found a picture of him. You know how many pictures I've seen of <sighs> Koenig? Mm-hmm. Turned out that they were all some other sniper. Mm-hmm. I don't see that his lips moving. Still sounds like Frank to me. There you go. This is a live performance. Can't see him. Thank you, Zoom. There you go. There's his lips moving. So he's a good lip singer. (laughs) Have you never heard of Millie Vanilli? It's a live performance. Everybody lip sings a live performance. Yep. Did you know, um, you know the mamas and the papas, right? I've heard. Okay, they were on, I want to say it's the Ed Sullivan show, but it might have been something else. And they were told, you have to lip sync. Like, they um, had backing tracks. They weren't allowed to sing live. So, one of the members of the group, she like fully on, like, peeled a banana and ate it during the performance. Like, she pretended to sing some of it, but occasionally she would just stop singing and take a bite. (laughs) And the music kept going. Let's see, how did we go from that and finding humor in it (laughs) to, Oh, she's lip singing! Fraud! Yeah. Um, There's another one. I can't remember what group it is, but they were told that, you know, they'd be using a backing track. And so the lead of the group told his drummer to not use drumsticks. So he's fully up there. Like, you wouldn't notice, unless you looked, that he wasn't holding drumsticks. <laughs> and again, it was like, in protest, that they weren't allowed to perform live. <laughs> I think it's awesome. You can't do these live performances. I mean, what if you screw up? It's going to embarrass us. It's so dumb. <laughs>